This is the F Sessions, I'm Emma, and um, I'm here with Zoe Wren. Hey. Hi, Emma. How you doing? Yeah, good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Uh, thanks so much for coming down to the studio. How did the music thing start for you? Um, well, I started playing guitar kind of years and years ago, not really properly. I just sort of learned a few a few covers and traditionals, and um, my family and I would always go to Cambridge Folk Festival, and one year I probably maybe six, seven years ago, maybe maybe even longer, I did an open mic there. Um, just a little kind of three song open mic and off the back of that got a couple of people saying oh do you want to come here and do a gig um, and of course I was really excited so I was like oh yeah yeah great and then I realised I actually had to write some songs to be able to perform a gig so I just started writing a few songs and it kind of went from there. So what was Cambridge Fake Festival like? Um, it's really nice it's, so like we've been going with my family for quite a few years every year um, it's really like it's it's not the folkiest of folk festivals if that makes yeah, sense yeah, it's yeah. kind of a bit of everything is it quite big um, then yeah it's pretty it's pretty big i think it is one of the biggest folk festivals yeah. in, in the country i'm not sure on the exact statistics okay. but yeah no it's, it's really good fun i'm just curious because i've never been to cambridge so um ah. one for the list i would recommend it yeah <laughs> <laughs> cool um so i noticed when i was doing an and i always feel like a bit of a stalker when this happens but <laughs> i kind of do a little bit of prep before the show and i noticed that you had a playlist on the website um, that's full of what I imagine you might think are inspirational women or tracks that you like. What it might have been is um, a compilation album that I'm on, I reckon. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, so Folkstock, um, who is, is, is my label that I put out my music with, um, they have a, yeah, a, a really kind of, a really strong female artist presence. And ah, okay. um, Helen is kind of doing a lot um, in that sense. And so kind of to celebrate that, yeah. a few years back, put out a compilation album called the Femme Fatales of Folk oh, um, and there was yeah loads of us on there um, Peggy Seeger was on there actually which was amazing nice. um, so I was kind of fangirling a bit that I was on a CD with Peggy Seeger <laughs> um, so yeah lots of really really amazing artists on that awesome um, and I know that like off the back of that there's lots of talk of women in the music industry at the moment um, how has it been for you as a female artist um, I think I feel like I've had a really great experience because I've been kind of surrounded by so many other um, kind of really amazing, strong female uh, mm. singer songwriters and musicians, and kind of you know obviously my manager is female, and kind of so many people are, and I think the the folk world is getting really is getting so much better actually, um, so it's really positive actually. But you know there's still so much that needs to be done yeah. for the industry in general, um, and you know often a lot of my songs have a kind of feminist theme to them, so it's something I'm really aware of, and you know really want that to kind of improve. And where do you see it going? The, what, the the industry in general. Or yeah, the whole like women in the music industry thing. Um, I don't know. I I, I have a, a really positive feeling at the moment. Actually, I think there's so much building up, and there's you know there's been so much tension that's kind of being released, and there's so many kind of stories that are finally being heard. That I think I I think good things are coming. I do. No time for a well thought out reply. It's like trying to swim against the tide. I am one thin by my silent battle cry and working two jobs on the side. But if I had the time. And if I had the time, then I'd give you a piece of my mind. I only have two words to call my own, given to me by my old bed. But you take them and you twist them like old bones Well, you do the best you can But if I had the time And if I had the chance to say And if I had a choice Well, I'd give you a piece I'd ask you to leave 
what you choose, what you want to believe. So um, I'm looking at a list of songs in front of me, um, which I think are from your busking list. Yeah. Do you busk a lot? Yeah, I busk quite regularly. Usually I do sort of 10 or 12 hours a week. It's kind of, it kind of adds on to the gigs to make sure I can pay my rent, basically. <laughs> so I used to think until very recently that you could just rock up find a spot on the street and then just play but it doesn't work like that does it so it depends where you want to go they've recently made it f- legal to busk anywhere on the streets more or less in london which cool. is nice but you get a lot of competition there so i busk on the underground um that's a much more difficult process you have to apply for a license you have to audition and then you have to book your slots in advance um online and it's quite competitive to get the good slots um but, but do you have to do the same on the street as well or can you just rock no up? on the street i'm think don't quote you but i think you can just rock up but the underground is is much better in terms of just kind of the amount of people that will consistently pass you by also the standard on the underground (laughs) is much better but i guess because of that process that you said that'd be why yeah yeah you do have to audition um and i think quite a lot of people do tend to audition for it because it's it's quite as you know you can bust throughout winter because it's nice and warm (laughs) you're indoors Uh, but yeah do you ever um rock up on the street and then find that the weather's just not the one, and yeah, like, okay. Yeah, I, I, I used to, to busk outside when I was, you know, this kind of 16, 17. When I was living in Camden, I'd busk a lot on the canal, um, which was, you know, nice, but now... It must have been freezing, then. Well, I tended just to do it in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, now I'm quite spoiled. I just stay on the underground. Um, and any, any advice for someone that wants to start busking, what would you say to them to keep them going? Um, I would say... Start start and try it out, kind of going on the street, check your kind of legals, check that you actually can. Um, and then, you know, try out some different spots. Um, if you do have a small amp, that's always nice. It helps a lot. So I'm always plugged in. Um, and then it's totally worth applying for the underground. They only do auditions every two years, so you might have a bit of a wait. Wow. Every two um, years? Yeah. That's mad. I know. <laughs> so you might have a bit of a wait, but I think it's very much worth it. Did you have any, like, highlights on the busking front or any particularly strange or bad experiences? I always have strange experiences when I'm busking. (laughs) Sometimes they're nice. I get, other than money, you often get given some really weird things. So I've been given, like, bouquets of flowers. I got, like, the other day I got a bouquet of, like, glittery yellow roses. Oh, cute. I also got given, this woman gave me, um, like, some fresh brioche from Paul Bakery. She was like, thank you for the music. Have some brioche for your breakfast. I said, thank you very much. I will. (laughs) Um, but then you know you get you get the kind of the troublemakers. You get the people who want to play your guitar and you don't like. Yeah. You get the drunk guys. That How do you kind of do that way? Do. Sorry. How do you get around that? Um, you just have to be very firm. I've discovered you just have to say, Look, "I'm sorry, I'm working, yeah. um, and I need I need to do this." And I'm you know you just be firm with them, and they yeah. tend to just not give you too much trouble. I've got quite good at that over, <laughs> over the years. <laughs> so you've got a brand new EP coming out. Yeah. Um, it's called Golden Smoke. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, it's my second EP, but my first one was probably about four years ago, so it's been a long time coming, um, and I've only just sort of, in the last few months, kind of gone really full-time with music, so it's really nice to have that coincide with it. Um, and it's um, 
five traditional, uh, five, sorry, five originals and one traditional. And all the originals are kind of somehow based on a traditional song. So I've kind of taken traditional stories and sometimes I've just kind of retold them. Sometimes Ooh, I've sort of switched them up a bit. Um, so that's the kind of theme that, that kind of threads it all together. How long did it take to put it all together? Um, once I actually got in the studio, not too long, we did probably sort of three or four days about four days of recording um and then there's been a lot of back and forth with all the kind of final touches and the production and all of that it always takes a bit of time because you know i want it to sound sound really nice i want to sound how i want it to sound basically so were the tracks written especially for the ep or um it was about half half i think two or three of them i'd already written a while back and kind of knew i wanted to put them on an ep and then um, the final two I wrote sort of leading up to the recording because I was like, right, I need to write some more songs now. <laughs> Did you go into the studio with like a specific sound in mind or was it just a let's experiment and see what happens? Yeah, it was very much like a lot of the songs I'd been playing for a while so I kind of knew in my mind how I wanted them to sound vaguely. Some of them were new songs and I, I work quite a lot with the producer. Um, so Lauren Deacon Davis produces all of Folk Stock's um, albums and EPs and she's really great. She's, um, you know, she's a multi-instrumentalist in her own right and she's really kind of creative in coming up with lots of different things we can add to it so we had a lot of fun together basically working things out and I think we, we figured out we play about like eight instruments between us so we were just adding everything on. <laughs> <laughs> nice um, and how does it compare with the first EP Pandora's Box? Um, I think I think I've got a lot better as a songwriter since then um, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with actually how it's sounding and I feel quite proud of the whole thing. Um, it's there's definitely we don't also did a lot more to the track so Pandora's Box was quite like you know I, I sang I played the guitar and we maybe added a couple of harmonies and stuff but it was very much as I sound live so this one's a lot more produced um, which I think is nice because it's it's good to kind of build up a song to how you would ideally like it to sound when you could you know perform with a whole band or something like that you know nice. would you ever do that yeah, no, absolutely. Um, is that my card? So? It is actually. I haven't, I haven't yet announced anything. So a little, little preview, but um, oh, exclusive. Yeah, a little exclusive. We're going to be having. So I've got my EP launch on the seventh of February, which will be at Greeno, and that'll be quite a small sort of intimate acoustic gig. Um, but I really wanted to do something with the whole band, so I have got a band together for a sort of one-off gig, which will be happening in March, which will be to kind of um, a kind of I guess a late EP celebration that will be for the digital release. Oh, um, nice. So that will also be in, in London on the 3rd of March and I've got some very talented musicians playing with me then, so that's really exciting. How do you go about finding musicians that um, work well to form that band? Um, just basically through friends. So Lauren, the producer, is actually playing because obviously she knows all the songs really well because yeah, we've worked cool. on them together. Um, and then her friend, who I know is playing the bass, um, and my brother, Zach, who plays the baron, like the Irish Handy. drum. Yeah. We often do a few gigs together, so I've asked cool. him along as well. So it's just sort of come together quite naturally, which was nice. Sylvia is getting suspicious of all the long nights spent away. Strange disappearances without coherence by night and by day. Well, is he as true as she says, or is he gone astray? Well, she found a solution for her retribution, the price he would have paid. She rode and she rode, dressed in highwayman's clothes. And she found life was better that way She felt so damn free She just couldn't believe There was no one to heed or obey And when she came home Well, she still felt alone And she wished she was back on the road But she couldn't wait for the next time That she could go to her lover while still undercover and pointed her gun Amazed at the powers that came with the trousers the test had begun He trembled and gave her his things when he was done When she asked for the ring that she'd once given him but he kept holding on She rode dressed in highwayman's clothes And she found life was better that way She felt so damn free She just couldn't believe There was no one to heed or obey And when she
she came home, well, she still felt alone And she wished she was back on the road But she couldn't wait for the next time that she could go Next morning he saw her all his things in her drawer And he blushed like a child he was shocked that a lady could be quite so shady It didn't hit his pride He held tightly on to her hand And he begged her to stay But she found she preferred dressing up in a shirt So she left down the way She rode and she rode dressed in highwayman's clothes she found life was better that way She felt so damn free She just couldn't believe There was no one to heed or obey She didn't come home She continued to roam And she lived her life without a plan But she doesn't care Because she's a highwayman Alpha sessions. I always hear that making that second record is that little bit hard because you feel the pressure because the first EP went so well, etc, etc. Um, did you find that pressure? Did you find it really hard to make that second EP or did you just kind of go with the flow? To be honest, I, I don't think I'm... I feel like maybe you get that pressure when you're quite, you know, a well-known big artist. I didn't really feel that because, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of emerging and finding my voice at the moment. So it actually came, went along quite smoothly. And I felt like because there was such a big gap in time in between, I felt like I'd written quite a few new songs. Um, was that done intentionally, the gap, or did it just kind of happen that way? The gap was basically uni. So oh, I, I, enough, I kind yeah. of finished school, went to uni, yeah. kind of kept it up as much as I could, but was so busy I didn't yeah, have time to do any recording. So that sort of got in the way. But now, now I'm kind of free nice. <laughs> and have been able to finish it, yeah. Cool. Um, and also you play lots of gigs up and down the country. You must have a favourite venue, do you? Um, I do actually, and I'm actually playing there tonight, which is really Ooh, funny. So I'm going, plug. yeah, I'm going to Hitchin Folk Club, um, and I just I really love it there. It's um, it's a really nice venue, great atmosphere. They always take really good care of you um, while you're there, and I get to support really cool artists. So I kind of I, I love actually watching um, the headliners afterwards. So I'm supporting Nine Barrow today, cool. and I'm quite excited to see them live. What's the venue like? Like paint us a picture. Um, it's in the, um, it's in a hotel, it's like the kind of a top room there, it's pretty big actually, um, got a nice sort of stage set up and it's, I, you can fit several hundred people in there. I oh, so it's quite large. Yeah, it's, it's a big venue, okay. um, and it ha it always has really nice sound, which is, which is always nice when you're performing somewhere, it's good to kind of feel safe. And, and is that going to be stripped back tonight, or is that going to be with other that's, musicians? That's going to just be, just be me on my own. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, what about influences? Like in terms of artists that you feel have influenced your music, who would you say they were? I've got quite, so I grew up with quite a kind of old fashioned taste in music, mainly because of my parents actually. Um, so a lot of kind of 60s, 70s singer songwriters. So, you know, Joni Mitchell, um, Tracy Chapman, Joan Byers, Simon and Garfunkel, cool people like that. Um, so it's, yeah, quite a kind of old school um, set of influences. And I think Joni Mitchell has probably remains one of my biggest influences. I just, she's kind of the reason why I try and write songs with maybe more interesting chords or in different tunings and stuff because I really love how creative she is with her with her guitar playing or sort of various instruments. And if we were to have listened to one of your playlists, what kind of music would we find on there? Um, this doesn't have to be influences, by the way. It can just be like what Zoe likes to listen to. Yeah, it's a, ho a whole load of different things. I kind of, I go through phases, so I, I don't tend to listen to like just folk music. I like a lot of a lot of different things so it's it's kind of yeah different phases every, every week or so <laughs> you recently remixed one of um dd from folk stocks tracks yeah <laughs> and we actually have had her on the show um a few weeks back she's really awesome too how did that come about so she as well as doing um her kind of producing she's got her solo artist project yeah. um and she wrote this song back off which i really loved i thought it was a really cool song um it's quite kind of punk pop um, and then she wanted to do a few different remixes of it, so I think she called a kind of more chill, ambienty version, a jazzy version. And then she asked me to do a kind of like a string, a kind of chamber string ensemble oh, wow. of it. Nice. And I was like, this should be interesting. Yeah, this is yeah, not something yeah. you kind of do every day, but it works surprisingly well. I didn't really have to do very much 
to actually make that work for a string quintet. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was pretty pleased with how it sounded. I think she's recorded it and we'll be releasing it wow. soon, yeah. So much fun. Um, so what about other dream collaborations? Um, that kind of led me to think if you could collaborate on a song with anyone, who would it be? Oh, man. I mean, my first answer would be Joni Mitchell, but, you know, way out of my league. <laughs> so, um... I don't know. Um, Joanie Mitchell is totally fine, by the way. You can say that. Well, there we go. I'm going to aim high then. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, cool. Okay. And um, if people want to find out more about you, where can they go? What can they do? Uh, so my website is zoeren.com, and that should have all the links on there. But if you kind of type Zoe Wren Music into Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, pretty much any kind of social media, I will be there. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Sally works the late night shift on every Friday night Ten hours at the hospital Tonight buses just to get home with morning light No bedtime story for her little girl But it's alright The wheel keeps turning round and round Day follows night As we make our way through London We make our way through London town well, Joe's a rock and roller trying to make it in this town With ringing ears and fingers so his guitar on his back and pushed on through the crowd It's a long way back to his front door But it's alright The wheel keeps turning round and round Day follows night As we make our way through London We make our way When he asked to meet her in the park But he told her, babe, it's me, not you And left her in the rain She just stood there till the day grew dark But it's alright The wind keeps turning round and round The day follows to close when a man with a guitar leaps on he sits down across from her their eyes meet and they smile as they make the way through london town